Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Family Fellowship Chapel on uh, April the 19th, the first Sunday after Easter. We're so glad you're here, and as always, we're thrilled to have you uh, uh, joining us on Facebook and on uh, many of the other avenues that you uh, uh, join us uh, for our ministry. And uh, we're glad to be able to bring this to you. And um, we hope that you had a great Easter. We hope you've had a safe time. We want to remind you that tonight at 6 o'clock we will be doing our family Bible study. And uh, uh, that uh, has gone very well. We've had a great response to that. We want you to take advantage of that. So we thank God for the opportunities that God has given us over this last month to spend time in the Word, to spend time in prayer, and to uh, uh, spend time seeking God and sharing the Word of the good news of the Gospel in our households. So we're doing everything we can do to take America back, one household, one husband, one mother, one child at a time, while God has given us this great opportunity. So today we're going to worship. We're going to begin with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you today for your love, your goodness, your kindness. We thank you for your care. We pray, God, that as we worship you today, we would be able to enter into your presence and we would be able to enter into the knowledge of the truth about Jesus Christ. Bless us now, I pray, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Now, of course, we come to the time where we give our offering. I want to remind you, and of course, Jesse will be flashing this on the screen, uh, your offerings can be mailed to box P.O. Box 993, Toast, North Carolina, uh, 27049, or you can give at mikespringstonffc.podcast.com. Either way, your offerings will get in to us, and uh, as you know, that's essential to our church and essential to the uh, operation continuing uh, within our church family. So we bless you for giving. As I've said so many times, you'll never be more like God than when you're giving. So I pray today that as we pray over this offering, that you will be blessed by it, and that you will give to God the measure that God has provided you with, and, and let the Holy Spirit bless it back to you. So, Father, we thank you today for the opportunity to give. We praise you for the time that has been provided for us and the means that has been provided for us to be givers. And for that, God, today we lift our gift before you as an offering. We lift it before you as a praise. We let out from our storehouse today so that you can open the windows of heaven and top off the blessings because we have given. Now do it in Jesus' name and we'll praise you now and forever. Amen and amen. Now we come to the time where we go to worship. As always, I want you to enter into worship, enjoy the worship, sing along with them, listen to the scripture that Juliana is going to read because the music will always follow that vein. And I want you to follow the message of the Scripture. Don't get tangled up in the beat of the music, as they would at a rock concert, but get into the message, the Scripture that's given, the message that the song gives that is in co coordination with the Scripture. And I know that you will be blessed as you worship today. In 1 Corinthians 3 and 10 and 11, it says, By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise builder, and someone else is building on it. But each one should build with care, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. song we could ever sing 
worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. the name above every other name Jesus the only one who could ever say worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you we live for you and holy there is no one like you, there is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to go.
declaration this morning that we have our trust in Jesus Christ, amen, that we're not shaken. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Isaiah 43, 16 and 18 and 19 says, This is what the Lord says, who makes a way in the sea and a path through raging water. Do not remember the past events. Pay no attention to the things of old. Look, I'm about to do something new. Even now it is coming. Do you not see it? Indeed, I will make a way in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. Amen.
for who he is this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. Galatians 4, 7 says, so you, so you are no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you are his child, God has made you also an heir. Amen. Hallelujah. Pastor Mike, as he brings the word, open our hearts to receive. And all these things in Jesus' name, amen. Now we come to the point in time where we're going to give you the morning message. Two weeks ago, just the week before Easter, I began uh, to preach on the promises in the name of Jesus. 
And I want to follow that up, and it'll probably take me this week and next week to uh, uh, complete that concept and get it fleshed out like it needs to be so that you understand what it is that Jesus' name has promised you. And so uh, today we're going to pick back up with that. As we know, there are five promises in the name of Jesus that he talked about in Mark chapter 16, verses 15 through 20. We've talked about the first two, and that was the power to cast down devils and speak with new tongues. The other three were that there was nothing from outside that would hurt us. There was nothing from inside that would hurt us. And that those that we laid hands on that were sick, they would recover. Those are the five promises that Jesus alluded to in Mark chapter 16, verses 15 through 20. So now we're going to pick up with that message, and we want you to enjoy the promises in the name of Jesus. So here is the text from Mark 16, verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Now, so then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. Now, in the plan of God, there is space for everyone who believes. Now, I want to say that again. In the plan of God, there is space for everyone who believes. There is faith for the Methodist and the Baptist and there is faith for the, the Pentecostal. There is space for the Pentecostal. There is faith for, for the Episcopal and the, the Catholic. Everyone who believes there is space for you in the gospel. The depth of your relationship is as much a choice for you as it is for who you, whom you ser choose to serve. He has freely given the revelations by the power of the Holy Spirit to any man who is freely seeking Him. Now I want to show you something here that will support what I'm saying. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 17 says this, And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. So, and whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Well, the last time I looked, the Baptist, the Methodist, the Church of God, the Assembly of God, the Pentecostal Holiness, the Episcopals, all were, were giving uh, honor to God by word and deed. We're all in this thing. We're all seeking the same God. We're all looking for the same God. We are all attempting to approach the same God. Now the Bible says, and whatsoever, this word means anything. You is the next word. The word is the di directive of the statement and it focuses on the individual. Now I want you to notice that. It didn't focus on the church. It focused on the individual who makes up the church. And then it said, and whatever you do, this means to execute or exercise. So, and whatsoever you do. 
Not whatsoever the church does, your church, your individual organization I'm talking about. The church in general has the ability to use the name of Jesus and the church in general has the ability to function under the power and authority that is in the name of Jesus. And Paul then wrote in Colossians chapter 3, whatsoever you do and whatsoever you execute, and whatsoever you exercise, and then he says, in. This is coming to the fixed state or position of rest. That means that if you are in Christ Jesus, regardless of where you attend church, regardless of what your denominational doctrine says, if you are in Christ Jesus and your belief system is centered upon Him and He is Lord of your life, then you are in a state that is fixed because it is fixed and located strictly on Jesus Christ. So now whatever you do in word... That means something that's said, you're saying, that reflects the divine expression of Jesus Christ. Or deed, that's an act of, phys of physical or spiritual uh, labor. Then it tells you how to do all of this. Whatsoever ye do in word or deed. Now the key phrase here is whatsoever you do as an individual... In word or deed, then it says this word, do all in. Do everything in and from the fixed position of rest and confidence in the name of Jesus Christ. Now the next two words are the name. That is the authority and that means to rely upon the character that is in the name by which you have spoken those words or deeds. So whenever you're praying for someone's healing, when you're praying for a job, whatever the circumstance, whatever the deed, the action is, and the words that you have spoken about that action, those words or deeds that are done in the name of Jesus carry the authority and that authority is relying upon his character, and the character is in the name by which you are speaking to the word or deed. So, and whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord. Well, now the Lord means he is the master, the controller of all things in heaven and earth, and all things in hell, and is over all principalities, powers, and rulers. So as we look at this, and we understand the dynamics of the name of Jesus, I want to ask you, exactly what part of your life does it come under that control? Exactly what part of, of illness does it come under that control? Exactly what part of financial need does it come under the control of the Lord? The Master. He is over all principalities. He's over everything that has a name. So when you get to the Lord, the name of the Lord, Jesus Christ, you are calling on the Yeshua that is the salvation of God who through His name has provided deliverance, preservation, safety, healing, soundness, and wholeness. There's nothing left out of the name of Jesus, my friend. There's nothing that can happen in your life that the name of Jesus will not control when used appropriately from the correct belief system. There's nothing going on that the name of Jesus is not greater than. And then the Bible said, once you have used that name, now watch this because this is critical. He said, once you have used that name, then give thanks. Thanks for what? For what the name has accomplished. For the power that the name has been greater than. It means giving gratitude for the ability to use His name and the under, and understanding of the power authority and dominion that is in that name 
and that that name possesses. And then having the complete confidence that what you have said and done as your word or deed is a completed action because of who gave you that name to use and what was accomplished for that name to be given to you. Now, listen, your spirit is a resurrected spirit just like Jesus Christ. So if your spirit is a resurrected spirit, what Jesus accomplished in raising from the dead was accomplished in you. When he accomplished that, the Bible, Paul said that he was given a name which was above every name. Well, when he received that name, my friend, he fashioned you as unto his glorious self, Paul said in Philippians chapter 3, and now you have the ability to use the name of Jesus not only because He gave it to you, but because He fashioned you to function that way. And the, then, then Paul said in Colossians 3, to God and the Father by Him. Now I want you to watch this. This is the same exceeding God who stands behind what Jesus promised because what He promised was said only because his father told him to say it. So when we use the name appropriately, and we are literally doing it by the father, and expressing the facts, the acts, that God intends us to express through Jesus. I want you to get that. When we use the name of Jesus appropriately, from the correct belief system, through the correct resurrected inner man, now listen to that. When our inner man has been reborn, we have the right to the name of Jesus. How come Jesus gave us that right? Because His Father told Him to. And when we use that appropriately from the reborn spirit, we are doing it by the Father's expression of the acts that God intended us to be able to express through Jesus Christ. That's a critical thought. That's a revelation, friend. Now we can understand how Jesus said in John 14, 12, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. That's significant. Because in his going to his father, what he actually did was that he gave us through and by himself what the father intended us to have from the beginning. And that was the ability to have dominion and the ability to have authority and the ability to have power. Now with this understanding concerning the works acts and deeds that we do, as well as understanding that when those words, acts and deeds are done, while using the name of Jesus appropriately, we can apply His name to all things and to anything in the physical and the spiritual domain with the complete knowledge that we are expressing the divine plan of God for man each time we express that name. Did you hear that? Every time we use the name of Jesus, we are expressing into the spiritual, into the physical, the express design and plan for God in mankind through Jesus Christ. We are expressing God's very best for us as we come against principalities, powers, dominions, mights, whatever the case, rulers. We are using the divine plan of God through the name of Jesus to be more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. We can further understand why Paul made this comment. We are complete 
in Him. Colossians 2.10 said these words, And we are complete in Him, which is the head of all <coughs> principality and power. Here the word complete means to be replete. Now watch this now. To be replete or filled and well supplied with Him. And we are complete in Him. We are well supplied with Him. We are thoroughly furnished and satisfied to execute the office of our priesthood. At one spot in Jeremiah, about verse in chapter 31, I believe it was, it said that He would satiate the priest, the soul of the priest. So the priest would be soaked. We're soaked, friend. We are thoroughly furnished with Jesus Christ. We are satisfied to be able to execute the office of priesthood. We are a royal priest, a peculiar people. What makes us peculiar, Pastor? Well, we operate and function in the divine plan of God. And in that divine plan of God, the name of Jesus is given to us so that we can operate in power, authority, and dominion over any principality, any ruler of darkness in high places, any might, anything that has power, any dominion has to bow the knee to the name of Jesus. Now, life circumstances sometimes look so big. They look so difficult. They look so hard. But the Bible said in the book of Zechariah that mountains would fall at, that, at the name of Jesus. They wouldn't fall because of my strength. They wouldn't fall because of my power, but they would fall because of the Spirit of God functioning through the power of God by the divine plan, and mountains would crumble. Jesus said if we had the faith of a grain of mustard seed, we would say to the mountain, be thou removed, and it would be cast into the sea. Now someone said that sounds like good biblical talk. Well, let me tell you the truth of the matter. The name of Jesus, when that name is pronounced, the energized Spirit of God is released. Now, that name works when the resurrected Spirit of man has been resurrected by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. A newborn life has come upon us. We're functioning from a correct belief system. We're living for Jesus. We're operating in the fruit of the Spirit. And the name of Jesus begins to move the things out of our way that we may see as mountains, whatever that may be. You may see this coronavirus as a mountain. You may see uh, your financial situation as a mountain. You may see your children and, and their behaviors as a mountain. You may see the disrespect of our society as a mountain. Well, let me tell you something, friend. No matter what you see today, when we apply the name of Jesus... Devils are cast down. When we apply the name of Jesus, we can communicate on earth and in heaven through that blessed name. When we apply the name of Jesus, we are absolutely complete to do our priesthood work. We are complete to walk into the presence of God and there to find grace and mercy, to find help in time of need. Why? Because we knew the, we knew the man, Jesus Christ, who was touched with the feelings of our infirmities and yet was without sin. And therefore, we have access through His name. Now, we have a perfect supply of Him. Now, think about that. We have a perfect supply of Him because He seized the power in the spiritual realm and He seized the power in the natural realm. His complete possession of authority has made us to be absolutely and totally prepared with the ability to operate under His kingdom and with His authority, but also, very important you hear this, with His outcomes. 
with His outcomes. The promises of God are given to us. They are yea and amen in Him. His outcomes are yes and so be it. Now we know what Jesus said His name would do to devils and we know uh, what He said about our change in communication system. Let's check out the rest of the scripture in Mark chapter 16. Then shall you take up serpents. Now this concept is not how some people perceive the scripture. What it really is referring to is that when the name of Jesus is applied to the things that are coming at us from the outside that would attack our body from the outside, that would attack our peace from the outside, that would attack anything from the outside, those things are repelled due to the power of that is in that name. You remember Paul got bit by a serpent and he shook it off and it amazed them. That attack came from the outside of Paul. There's nothing outside of you, my friend, that the name of Jesus is not greater than. That's what this scripture is referring to. Remember, the name is based upon the power that caused Jesus to come out of the grave. Be seen of men, communicate, be handled by men, and then be risen again to a heavenly reunion with the Father. In other words, it is a name that represents the man that has done exploits that no man has ever done before. He is the first dead man to currently reside in heaven. So external acts are subdued by his name. Now, and if you drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Now we're talking about internal attacks. Now we are referring to the things that are coming after our insides. The name of Jesus is as active and powerful when speaking it to your body as it is when your outer man is attacked. Your body identifies with its creator and the healing power that is in that name takes effect. Do you remember when the Bible said he was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquities? The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we're healed. Isaiah 53, 5. Well, the stripes that went upon his back were provided so that you and I could have physical and spiritual healing. So uh, your body identifies with its creator and with his healing powers that are in the name of Jesus. And then the last, the fifth promise is, and they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. This name expresses itself in the recovery of the sick. I often tell people when I pray for them, I'm laying hands on you in the name of Jesus. You're healed. Go to the recovery room now. What do you do in the recovery room? You convalesce until you're completely well. You go through rehabilitation until you're completely well. That's what we're talking about here. We're laying hands on the sick and we're saying to them in the name of Jesus, go to the recovery room and they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Every man of whom uh, a is a believer by faith who uses the name of Jesus while laying on hands, uh, that individual they're laying hands on is headed to the recovery room. There they begin the process of recovering by the expression, now watch this, of their personal faith in Jesus Christ. This recovery process then, now get this, becomes a personal journey of a man's belief system. Someone said, now wait a minute preacher, you mean to tell me it's not the faith healer that causes me to get well? Well, I wish that were so. But Jesus consistently said your faith. Told people your faith. Your faith has made you whole. When you are laid hands on and the name of Jesus is pronounced against you, there's something that happens. The name of Jesus is pronounced and agreement occurs between you and the individual that's praying for you. And once the name of Jesus has been pronounced over you, then it now boils down to you walking in your belief system. That's why your belief system is so critical. What does your faith do for you? What does your faith say to you? 
What does your faith describe is going on in your spirit? This becomes a personal journey of a man's belief system. The Bible says work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. That means there is a personal journey of individual faith and an individual belief system. Yes, Jesus would heal the sick and yes, Jesus would raise the dead and, and did all the great exploits. But Jesus also utilized the faith that is in man for man's belief system to contact, and this was something that Israel had never had to use. They had never had to use faith before. Faith was a closed door until Jesus. But then when Jesus came, faith became the order of the day and faith was released into men who believe and now men's belief system is the journey that leads them to the meeting of their need. Your belief system in the name of Jesus. It's a dynamic system and it's one where your belief system is exposed in the recovery room. Because it is in that belief system that you're utilizing in the recovery room that will determine your outcome. Your personal faith and the ability to release that faith is essential for this system to work. Now who is our faith in? Well, it's in Jesus Christ. We're releasing our faith in Jesus Christ. I preached on Hebrews 11, uh, chapter 11 and verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things unseen. And we found out that the substance and the evidence are both Jesus Christ. Our faith has to be resolute. Our faith has to be absolutely foundational as he being the author and the finisher of our faith. He attributes these teachings to Jesus. Now watch this now. This is so critical that you hear what I'm about to say. Because Mark, in writing these books, could have made this all up, but then he comes to this verse 19 and attributes everything he's taught about the five promises of, of the Master directly to Jesus. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, that is such a powerful verse because today the Lord is speaking unto you. He's speaking the same words to you. Mark punctuates this writing by where he sees Jesus going. But before he did that, he directly related these promises that were in the name of Jesus to Jesus himself. And then he says that he was received up into heaven. Jesus Christ left these words and then went to glory. Then he draws a firm conclusion by identifying where he sat down. Now my friend, had he sat down on the street corner, had he closed the book and sat down in the temple, there would have been still yet more work to be done. But he didn't do that. This statement was the amen and so be it of this moment. If he is seated at the right hand of God, then he is accepted. If he is accepted, then we through his words are also accepted. So when he sat down on the right hand of God, he was accepted, and the words that he spoke were accepted. And God was more saying to man than ever before, the divine plan for man's welfare, for man's prosperity, for man's healing, for man's deliverance, for man's preservation, for man's safety, for man's soundness, and for man's wholeness has been seated right here by my right hand. Now that he is seated, 
I will make every enemy his footstool until he returns. Glory to God. What enemy, Pastor Mike, are you talking about? Well, I'm talking about the enemy of poverty. I'm talking about the enemy of captivity. I'm talking about the enemy of brokenheartedness. I'm talking about the enemy of bruised. I'm talking about the enemy of fear. I'm talking about the enemy of doubt. I'm talking about the enemy that comes from principalities, powers, rulers of darkness and high places and dominions that would overshadow you and encompass you and make you live a life of fear, make you live a life of doubt. I'm talking about anything, anything from anywhere that would come against you. Anything. When he sat down at the right hand of God, the Bible said that the enemy was his footstool. So Jesus' name has been given to us. Now watch what happened now, and I want this to happen for you. I'm coming to a close. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. The greatest message that Mark could convey is spoken in verse 20. What Jesus said they could do was done, but it was not done by their hand. It was done by the name of Jesus. When the believers spoke that name directly into the need, they preached Jesus to the people. Jesus worked with them through their spirit to ensure that the results of that preaching were enforced and reinforced as he gave signs to confirm his own promises. Those signs followed them. They lived under the confirming signs of the Lord. Now, so be it. That means that this is not something that is not available for us today. Hebrews 13 and 8 said Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now as we move forward, we've got to consider the words of our Lord when we are given the power to use the name of Jesus. We're given that power to use it against the demonic world. We're given that power to use the message to speak and convey the gospel in earth and heaven. We're using that power against any outer attacks, any disease, sickness, pestilence that come against us. We're using the name of Jesus to subdue it. We are using that against inner attacks that are physical, that even spiritual attacks, of course, that the name of Jesus in the areas of man that are unseen to him are manifested to be healed because of the authority in that name. Then once we use that, we know that we are going into the recovery experience. For everyone, we lay hands on everyone I pray for. Everyone that we extend our hands to pray for. And prayer has no distance. This is the experience where the persons prayed for must use their personal faith now. While in the recovery room. Five blessings directly related to a man. Now, I want to pray with you today because I believe that you have seen the promises of God. The promise to cast down devils, speak with new tongues, communicate the gospel. Nothing outside your body hurts you. Nothing coming from the inside, spiritual or physical, hurts you. And everybody we pray for, Everybody we lay hands on goes to the recovery room. But the biggest message is the Lord worked with them to confirm the word with signs that followed. Now we're going to pray. Now I'm going to pray for you physically. I'm going to pray for you spiritually. I'm going to pray for you uh, as you stand against the, 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 the challenges of our times. I'm going to pray for those of you that are unsaved and I'll ask you to pray with me. Now, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus as I extend my hands today. I pray for everybody that's listening. I pray that in the name of Jesus that you would minister to their physical body, that you would minister to their spiritual body, that you would take those that are poor spiritually and make them wealthy. Make them rich spiritually. I pray for those that are wounded or bruised. I pray for those that are captive. I pray for those, God, that have no liberty today. 
I extend my hand and call the name of Jesus. And I release that name into the people that are listening. I release that name upon you today. I release you today in the name of Jesus to prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. I release you today. But as I release my faith into you today, I call your faith to rise up on the inside of you. And I call your faith to reach out and grab this prayer of agreement. And as you grab this prayer of agreement, I send you to the recovery room in the name of Jesus where you will grow and develop your personal faith to grasp and receive. Now, Father, if there's anyone that has anything that they need to forgive others about. Today I call on them to pray the prayer that they forgive those that may have hurt, those that may have caused harm, those that may have said mean words, those that have done things to them in the past. We release them to you today so that we can receive from you the promises that are in Jesus' name. Father, for that we give you praise. Now I want to pray for those of you that are lost today. If you'll pray like this, today will be your day when you will take a new Lord in the center of your life and your spirit man will change and you'll come to know this Christ Jesus who will then work in you to confirm his word in you with signs that follow. Now Father, I pray, I'm a sinner Forgive me my sins. I turn from my sins. I make you Lord of my life. I put you at the center of my life. And in so doing, I accept Jesus Christ as my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I pray that you've enjoyed the, the service today. Next week I will complete this because I want to show you how the name of Jesus worked in the New Testament. And so we'll do the promises of Jesus part three next Sunday morning. You don't want to miss that because we're going to show you what the Word of God says about how this name interacted with people and what happened when the interaction of the name of Jesus was introduced into the lives of people. Now I challenge you this week, get in the recovery room, build your faith in the Word of God. I challenge you this week to get in the Word. I challenge you this week to pray. Tonight at 6 o'clock, I'll be doing the family Bible study back on Facebook. I look forward to having you visit in with me. May God bless every one of you that are members of the Family Fellowship Chapel uh, family. And every one of you that are listening in from outside, we appreciate your time and pray that God is blessing and working through the Word of God that you've heard on this Facebook post to minister directly in your life. Bless them now, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen and amen.